This is Conversations with Women in Sales, an award-winning podcast created by Barbara Giamanco, who hosted the first 67 episodes. Listen to interviews with amazing women about their journeys in their sales careers, often discussing sales leadership tips, ideas, and strategies. We aim to inspire women to consider a sales career and for some women to grow into sales leadership. Men, we appreciate your allyship. And now, your host, Lori Richardson. Thank you to our sponsor, Scalibrium. Scalibrium just added a methodology agnostic module to their existing coaching platform to improve the effectiveness of your sales and go-to-market teams. This includes out-of-the-box templates and frameworks enhancing collaboration and driving better outcomes. See what all the excitement is about at Scalibrium.com. I'm here today with Ashley Phillips. Ashley is the author of the new book, The Teacher's Guide to Changing Careers. So welcome, Ashley. It's so good to have you here today. Yeah, thanks, Lori. I am really looking forward to having this conversation with you. This is going to be great. Yeah, it's fun because we've talked online and a lot of people know that I was a teacher before I got into sales, but you changed careers from being a teacher. You got into sales and now you've written a book to help other people change, not just the sales, but different careers and to let teachers know what some of their options are. So congratulations on that. But tell us first about a little bit about your background, because you started as a classroom teacher. You were in Missouri and I think in Texas. And how did you get to, to sales through your journey? Yeah, thanks, Lori. It, it's quite an accomplishment. I was writing that book for a while, so I'm really excited to launch it and, and help other people. It's been a, a labor of love. But yeah, I taught in Missouri and Texas and was in a bunch of different school districts. And unfortunately, in my experience, it didn't matter where I was teaching. I kept running into the same pains, the same barriers. And I thought, this isn't getting better. And it can't be just me because I'm changing campuses and I'm still running into the same problems and things that are bringing me down. And so it just was a natural uh, evolution through the seven years that I was a teacher that by the end of it, I was like, I, I really need a change. And I got into sales because I had just, I had a lot of drive to change all of my life. And I write about this in the book a little bit. I'd come into some personal things that were really unsatisfying and they left me really financially unstable and very insecure. And one of the things at night when I'd be sad and, and just figuring out, like, what is it that I'm going to do to change this? What I did know for sure is I never wanted to live in the state that I was in again. Uh-huh. And so what am I going to do to make sure that Ashley can always count on Ashley and that I'm going to be able to be financially stable and support myself? And so I started looking around. I I did fall into sales. It wasn't immediately in that first job, but I did know that I was money driven. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Money money is a tool. A lot of people, I've talked to a lot of women who say, oh, I'm not going to do it for the money. It's like money's a tool. Money will buy you freedom. Yeah, it will. And it'll buy you a lot of stability in your life. And a lot of that, like I've talked about this before, like when you can't go out to dinner with your friends because you actually don't have. $70 $70 to spend at a restaurant on a drink and a salad and, and an entree. You're like, that's not a good life. That's not fun. And so it's the little things. It's not like you have to have millions of dollars to be happy. You just have to have right. a little so you're satisfied and support the lifestyle that you want for yourself. Yeah. So that's great. So you looked for opportunities where you can earn a decent wage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. And did you get your first roll through a Facebook comment or something? What was it all about? Yeah, it, it's crazy. I was making the same mistakes that I see a lot of teachers make right now, looking in the job hunt, applying to everything and and, and just trapped in this online circus of resume uploads that leads to nowhere and leaves you exhausted. And so, of course, I switch over to social media like everybody and I'm scrolling on Facebook and a former teacher acquaintance wrote, I'm in Hawaii for work. And I made a comment and I said, I want to be in Hawaii for work. And sure enough, I got a DM from them and they were like, hey, I can't believe I didn't think of you. Remember when you managed the LMS on campus? Like I have that job, but it's operations training. It's solar installation training. The content's different, but you're managing the LMS. Do you want it? And I'm like, yeah. 
that was it. Like after after wow. months, after six months of nothing coming to me online with the online upload and resumes, I got it through networking, through just saying, I want this job and I will do this job. That was it. So I got it through Facebook, I guess, is what that I That's so great. So that's a good tip for people. I know that there are a lot of people in between jobs right now that are looking and that try something different, do something more unconventional and connect with people. I always tell this is a tip that I give to people too, because someone reached out to me yesterday and said that their job ended, that they've been doing, and if I knew of anything. And here's what I tell them I, I say, tell me, give me a list of companies that you like, that you would love to work for, and I'll see who I know there. Because when someone says, hey, if you know of anything, let me know, which many people do, it's never going to happen because yeah. I have a thousand other things going on and I can barely track my own project I'm doing. <laughs> so the yeah, best yeah. thing for people, if you want to reach out to someone that's connected to a lot of people, is to, is to just be really polite about it and just say, I'm, I'm looking at these three or four or five target companies. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you might know anyone there and maybe... Uh, be willing to connect me. And that's a really great thing that people can do. It is. Yeah. And tell them the why, like why those three to five companies, because they may say, I actually don't know one at those five, but your why, I actually know the sixth company and it, it's meeting your needs. So um, no, like I said, doing that self-assessment instead of just, you know, going after everything, but figuring out like what's the good fit for you is so key. And then sharing that and not hiding that from anybody. People can't help you if they don't know how to help you or right. what to help you with, right? Exactly. And someone else can't do all the work for you either. Like, yeah. I, I, it's unrealistic to tell someone if you know of anything. I know of a lot of things, but I don't know who's a good fit. I don't know if I would recommend them. There are a lot of things that I don't know well. So I'll let people know that. But that's a really, it's a good way that you can be proactive with people in your network that might be big, connected in big ways. I've been on LinkedIn forever, so I have a lot of connections in sales and marketing. I don't have a lot of connections in other areas, but I have tons in sales and marketing and company leadership. So for that, if someone's looking for sales or marketing, I could be a good referrer in that case. You're sold on the fact that careers like sales can be good for teachers, and there's some different factors that you think are good in the case of sales, right? And also, wait, let's backtrack. And talk about the fact that there are all sorts of different aspects to sales, right? Yeah, there are. It's like we talked about this before, it's really critical to go through that personality assessment piece for yourself, the self-assessment. When I close my eyes, what job do I want? If it's no longer teaching, that's great. But what are you still passionate about? What still makes you tick? And knowing those things and carrying that over. But in sales, one of the reasons that I do encourage teachers, if it is a good fit for them to go into it, is the amount of expansion once you're in your first role. I don't like to say that teachers get entry level roles because they've already, they're highly skilled. They've got multiple degrees usually. They've been working, they're not entry. This isn't your first job. So I like to call it early level. But if you get into an early level sales role, such as a BDR or an SDR, or maybe even that first commercial account executive, what teachers don't understand is how quickly you can rise through the ranks. and. Uh, one of the things that's hard to articulate about it is I tried to document that for the book and I wrote this really horrible chicken scratch looking visual and I was like, this isn't going to work. But I gave it to Mel Wise, my graphic designer for the book, and she turned it into something beautiful where it actually shows the flow. And that's what I wish teachers would also understand about the corporate world is it doesn't matter really which pocket or department you you fit into with your new role. Sales is unique in that there, it can expand in so many places. You can change the segment you're in and go from small to medium to large sales. You can go into different industries or verticals with the same product, right? If they have a product that fits multiple areas and then you can leave and go into management or account management or potentially product or work with customers on a cab and marketing. It's just it goes crazy. Like it's just this huge web. And that's what I love about sales. Teachers get this very tight ladder. But sales is not like that at all. It couldn't be more different. Yeah, there's so many different opportunities. And financially speaking, the reason I love sales, there are a couple things. One is because it can be virtually an unlimited income. Not always, but 
the the limits for for financial for financial standing is real it can be very high way more than teaching for sure we know that mm -hmm. and also it's very black and white you either did it or you didn't do it you sold or you didn't and if you're not if you feel like you're not good in in the role you can move adjacent to customer success where the customers are already sold you don't need to go and find them uh, but you can help them and, and maintain their their business with your company or you can help them grow it so there are lots of different options like you were saying and financially it, it's great it, it's also been a very flexible career for me in terms of I didn't have the privilege of working remotely in any of the roles I had, but when you do perform and you hit your numbers, you get a lot of flexibility about what you want to do. And so it, even now with more remote work, I think it's amazing that you can work remotely, you can have a, an unlimited income potential in many different roles, or at least a very high range of options and have some flexibility. It's really great for women where sales is, it, it, women are underrepresented in every level in sales, in business to business selling. So there are immense opportunities for women. I agree. There's a lot of teachers I talk to that they're, they've been teaching for seven, eight years, and their salary is the starting salary of a BDR. And they it's can that. make Right. If that, yeah, if these are the lower lowest level BDRs, so their salary, they're going one to one salary, but then they can make ten, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars more in commission plans, depending upon where you are. And they're like, I can go from making fifty two thousand a year to over six figures. Like it blows their mind. Like you said, that the amount of potential, depending upon the the product you're selling and the market fit, it's pretty incredible. For, for sales. And, and I love to, to let women know that, especially because they don't usually see themselves in sales. There's not, if you go and look online, you're not going to see as many people who look like you. And so it, that starts to make you feel like, then that's not for me. I don't belong there. And I wish that would change. That's why I'm excited to be talking with you about yeah, this. That's why we have this podcast. Yeah, exactly. It's why it exists. Because it's showcase like hundreds of women that have gone into sales or sales leadership and what their journey, they come from all different backgrounds. I, I remember one of the first women that I helped to leave a teaching role. She was in a rural school district and she made, I don't know, $28,000 a year or 30 some thousand dollars a year. And she, within a year of getting, she got into tech sales. It was a booming economy at the time, but she went to a six figure income. And as a, a single mom, that's a game changer. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and, there are other women that have gotten out of poverty with their families uh, because they got into sales roles and then into tech sales in a lot of cases. Um, I was in, I was a single mom and I was a teacher, preschool teacher, but I worked with the young kids and I couldn't afford shoes you know, for my son. And, and I ultimately said, I want to make the same money as my male counterpart. And I took a non-traditional program for women. I went through all these different things. I poured cement, I climbed scaffolds. And then a guy came in and talked about technology. And I was like, oh, and somehow I put two and two together that I grew up in my grandmother's clothing store and she was my role model for selling. And I thought maybe I could sell technology. And I figured that out on my own, my little brain <laughs> and got into the very beginning of the tech boom years ago. And when we were going to put a computer on everybody's desk with Bill Gates and I was in Seattle, so I was in the land of Microsoft and it was amazing. And it, it changed my life and my family's life forever. So I, I love what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Your, your story is inspiring. It's, I hope that others hear you and hear that can be me too. I really hope they are inspired by that because you really can change your life. Yeah. And the longer version is that I was in a physically abusive marriage and I left that at 19. And so I went from that and being in pretty much poverty it is a minimum wage job. We weren't at a loss for our food. We ha I had family nearby, but it wasn't, we were not destitute, but we were not on the fast track to success. And 
getting into sales. And, and unfortunately, leaving as a teacher, I feel bad because a lot of great teachers have left because we don't place priority on it in terms of pay or just status is just such a low level role, which is, I feel heartbreaking. But I was able to take care of my family. I could help my community. I became involved in other things. And that's what happens when you empower women with roles like that, with better pay, with better careers. So yeah, yeah. it's a big deal. That guilt you talk about, that stigma of how could you leave a profession so noble and how could you? And there's a couple of gut reactions. Now that I've been out of it, my, my gut is if it's so great, then you go do it. So there's that. Just starting out just from the jump. If it's as great as you think it is, you should go do it. Give it a go because it's not going to be what you think. But the other thing, too, is and I tell teachers who are dealing with sadness and grief because they do have a passion for helping students. And I get that. And we need that in this country with teaching. But I also tell them, and I say this all the time, there is no tech billionaire give, handing out stipends at the end of your retirement so you can actually retire and not still have to have that second job, right? There, there is no trophy for sacrificing your life and yourself and your family for staying in the profession and living in debt your whole life and not, again, not being able to buy shoes or figuring out, I can't contribute to the kiddos 529 and my retirement and still get school supplies for next year or new clothes because kids right. grow like weeds. Like I tell them all the time, like people can say what they want at you. I get messages on LinkedIn. Oh, I wish you'd put more effort into changing the system. Oh, come on. Like we all want the system to change and I'll be in my grave eight feet under before the system changes. Exactly. And so that I just, I encourage teachers like, yeah, people will make comments. People will say things, but you know what? It's your life too. You can live your life. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree with that more. So you have your new book coming out. Tell us a little bit about it so that we could all get it and we can give it to the teachers that we love that then want be 100% happy with what they're doing. Yes. Yes. And even the teachers that are still stuck in the spiral of complaining, if you're the teacher adjacent, I like to call it, if it's your significant other or your sibling and you're like, I love you, but I can't stand you complaining about this at me anymore. It might be a really good gift to give them over the summer. But the book itself walks through three different buckets, if you will. The very first is called The Journey Out. And it helps you assess, is now the right time to leave? I want you to see yourself, hear yourself, experience those chapters and how people reach out to me in my story and see that and get confidence that this is a change you can make. The second section is really exciting. It helps you do that. And in, in the first, the journey out, you're doing a lot of the self-reflection. Think of it as front-loading if it was still in your classroom, right? And then the second section goes into helping you make changes while you're in the classroom. Because you can't just drop everything and get a job right now. The economy is not allowing for that at all. And it's going to walk through what are your, what should you be doing in the classroom? But then I walk you through what are the different industry and company types that you should narrow down that fit who you are. And then we walk through the jobs. And so like I said, sales is a big part of the book that I do talk about because that was my career with sales and sales enablement. And then from there... After you narrow that down, Lori, it's a point you brought up earlier in this discussion is now you're going to outreach, but you're going to be intelligent and strategic about your outreach. When you reach out, what are you going to say? What's the story you're going to tell? I help you build your personal brand. And it's more about networking and focus on that way more than it is this resume and this, like I said, the online upload circus. And throughout there, we talk, we can talk too, but there's transferable skills that we cover of what does it mean from classroom to corporate? What does that look like? Uh, I wanted to talk about that because there, there are areas where former teachers really shine in sales anyway, right? And one of them is the ability to listen, mm -hmm. right? What are some yeah. other areas? <laughs> yeah, the ability to listen, listening to understand versus responding, like that is key for sales. And we do that with kiddos all the time. And so a couple others is one that, that I actually used when I was a solution consultant that was, was really strong at was not making up an answer. A lot of times in sales, there's pressure to say yes to everything. Oh, we do it all. We do that and more and this and that. And you're like, wait, you're, is it, the customer sitting there scratching their head and going, there's no way that's true. Right. Um, but it is really powerful for a teacher with confidence to say, you know, what, I don't know, but let's look it up. Or I don't know, but I'm going to follow up with you. 
And that is really key to building trust with your clients and sales. And so teachers can do that. Asking questions at different levels and checking for understanding. You've been listening. The first thing you should probably do is ask another question instead of giving an answer, especially in sales. You're trying to really figure out how can you actually help. And so asking la different layers and levels of questions. And I would just say like one of the other things that's really strong is the idea of using really good presentation skills and having an organization to your presentation. There's a method to the madness. Teachers are really good at building concepts upon one another. They're good at telling that story and that learning journey. And so when you're in sales and you're trying to explain why or how your service, your solution is a fit, it's teachers are natural at saying, okay, we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to walk through this together. And I'm going to bring everybody along with me on this journey and make sure everyone's understanding and aligned. And at the end, I, I believe that's why teachers make really good sales reps is they do bring everybody, their audience along with them, and they care about everybody feeling like they know what's going on versus let me just sling a bunch of info at you. And, and oh, by the way, let me forward this white paper. Yeah, that's so great. All those points are so valid and so important in sales. And it's funny because I, I've always thought of myself and I think the best salespeople are lifelong learners, but I also identify as being a teacher. So I think I teach today and I've been teaching and that that's what I wanted to do when I was little. I love school. I used to pretend I was in school over the summer. I used to go to the library and check out oh, all yeah. the books. I love school so much. And it was sad to leave working with kids, but I teach now and I do have the I have the same standards and ideals, I think. And and so that's one of the great things about it. And and we need more women. We it's do. a great pool of people to tap into. Yeah. It's really valuable. Yeah, I'm like you. I decided early on in early high school that I wanted to be a teacher. And I did the whole cadet teaching thing and was camp counselor in the summer. And my great answer teachers, my grandma's a teacher. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I think is one of the coolest things about the book is I had a font made in my grandmother's handwriting. So the title of the book is actually my grandmother's beautiful teacher script. I used to have the chalkboard wow. and you're like, how I the heck? Like, that. My next bill marker, chicken scratch, look terrible. Like, how did they used to do that? And so the title of the book, and, and there's some headings and stuff in it. It's actually my grandmother's handwriting from when she was a teacher is part of it. But yeah, just, I too thought I wanted to be a teacher for a long time. And, and I'm glad I made the change. But we do need to encourage women who are funneled into this service industry of teaching to understand that, that you are more valuable outside of the classroom. Like you have value of value as a teacher very much, but you have value outside of the classroom too, if that's what you want. We love teachers. We love people that are working with kids. But if you happen to be someone who cannot afford to do it anymore, it happened to me, uh, or you're looking for some professional growth and pain, I would love for you to get Ashley's book. Tell us where we can get it and how can people connect to you, Ashley? Yeah, the best place to connect, I do most of it on LinkedIn. I've got some of the other social medias and I'm, I am just not as good at them. I try and post on them regularly, but I don't. But LinkedIn's the best place to find me and, and my page on LinkedIn. With, I have my profile, but the page is the Teacher's Guide to Changing Careers, which is the name of the book. The website is Teaching Career Change. And right now you can sign up, pre-order, and you can get chapter 10 complimentary. And that's a really special chapter to me because it's actually, I do like a QA and a interview style chapter with other teachers who have successfully left the classroom and you can read what jobs they have today, how they did it. They're hard lessons learned. So don't repeat these mistakes. They're telling you explicitly what won't work, uh, but they also share what, what did work for them. And so you can get started right now, just starting to plot and scheme. Okay, what do I want next? You can look for that. And then the link to buy the book will be live on June 25th on the website. Oh, that's fantastic. So it's Ashley Phillips. Got to make sure to spell her name right. <laughs> Great. One, one L and two P's. Yeah, I'm one L and two P's in Phillips. Yes. That's great. Thank you so much, Ashley. And I wish you great success with the book. And if anyone makes a career change because of it, be sure and let us know. And maybe you can be on the show next. Oh, yeah. I'd love to hear from you. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. And, and yeah. good luck to you. Yeah. Thank you, Lori. Thanks for listening to this episode of Conversations with Women in Sales. You can find all of our episodes at womensalespros.com forward slash podcast. Help us spread the word and let's change the face of B2B sales.